This video is going to be about my Benchmade 275 Adamus folder. Uh, this is probably one of my most used knives. I use it quite a bit. And I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. I'll get into that a little bit later, but I've used this knife quite extensively. For those that don't know, it's about a 3.8 inch blade. D2, black Cerakote, saber grind. About 0.15 inches blade stock rather thick handle. I'm not really positive what the measurements on that is, but quite thick. Quite thick G10 liners, drilled out liners, backspacer, obviously bench made, so access lock. And yeah, very well used knife. I did reprofile the shit out of this knife. This is about a 10 degrees per side edge and I knocked the shoulder off of it. So it it's almost like this is a zero grind not quite there is a very slight angle change when you meet the bevel and for anyone who notices uh yeah the bevels is slightly uh less wide on this side than it is on this side but that's just because it's very slightly uneven at the grind line if it'll get it to focus yeah um but if you can see trying to get it to focus. Ah, well, it doesn't want to focus. But, uh, yeah. Reprofile the shit out of this knife. Drastically improves the cutting ability. Um, stock, the cutting ability is really just not very good on this knife. Um, but with this capability, it's actually really not that bad. Um, and I generally, unless I have some type of serious edge damage, which is really not often, I will maintain this with a micro bevel from either my medium side of my Spydeco double stuff or with the fine side of my Fall Niven DC4 pocket stone, which is a stone I carry in my pocket, my back pocket every day. Really is a great stone. And yeah, this, just to go over some things, um, just I think they really took what could have been a truly great knife and just stopped just short of doing it. Everything has the potential to be fantastic, but I mean, they just chose not to do that. Uh, the biggest thing, obviously, is the blade. They have this rather thick blade, and they chose to do this pretty low saber grind. There's been a lot of explanations about that. I've talked to a lot of people. They say stuff. I've heard some guys say, oh, this is made to open ammo crates and dig in the ground and just all kind of weird stuff and I just vehemently disagree that taking a blade of this thickness on a folder no less which is inherently going to be fairly weak anyway taking a blade of this thickness and doing this hollow grind and expecting that to have some drastic toughness improvement especially with this D2 being 61 to 62 Rockwell instead of doing a nice full flat or hell do like they did on that ruckus that I showed in one of my last videos do like they did on the Ruckus. That has the same blade thickness, similar blade width, vastly better edge geometry than this thing, and still wouldn't lack toughness. Um, I really think they could have done a much higher grind, hell, even just a full flat grind on this thing. Obtained all the toughness that you could realistically expect from this folding knife, and have a knife that cuts much better. I just really disagree with this idea in the industry that you have to make these massive concessions to toughness in order, I mean, massive concessions to cutting ability in order to have toughness. There, in my opinion, it just gets to a point where there's no practical toughness gain. Sure, is the, in an absolute sense, is this tougher? Probably. Is it going to matter? Not at all. Um, I would really love to see them do a second version of this knife with a full flat grind. Uh, handles. This is probably the most infuriating thing about the handle. It's got it's a brown handle, but for some reason, I have no idea what possessed them to do this. It's black G10 that they did a brown Cerakote on. And that's why you see all these uh, this discoloration because I tried to see what would happen if I scraped off the Cerakote if it would improve the grip because the Cerakote is somewhat slick uh, and it wouldn't do anything so I just kind of stopped in the middle and left it with this weathered look. I'm not sure if the new ones have 
um, Brown G10 instead. Uh, they've proven that they can do really solid Brown G10. The 300 SN knife is just absolutely beautiful G10 on that knife. I don't know why they couldn't have done that with this knife. This just seems like an absolutely idiotic solution to something that's not even a problem because Brown G10 is extremely easy to find. The other issue with the knife is there is very little contouring. Again, as I showed in my video on my 610 Ruckus, Benchmade is very easily able to make very nicely contoured scales. Very nicely. And you have huge amounts of material on these scales to make this handle fantastic. And they chose to just chamfer the edges and not do anything. And it's not terrible when you hold the knife like this. It, you know, it's not really all that bad. But it could have been a lot better. And another response I hear people say about that is, well, it's made to wear gloves. Another bullshit excuse I find. Um, if your handle is only comfortable when you're wearing heavy gloves, then you don't have a comfortable handle. Learn to make a handle appropriate. Um... It's got the nice general shape that could have gone in, but again, they chose not to. The jimping up here, uh, it's not too bad. It's not as good as the ruckus, but it's not atrocious either. And they have it in here. Works fine. Uh, as far as grips, uh, I don't like the saber grip right here. It's not that great for me, but doing a Filipino-style grip up here works pretty well for comfort and for light cutting like cardboards and ropes and things like that. Obviously, you have the hammer grip right here for heavier cutting. Uh, you could choke up on this, but you'll get some irritation from this part of the blade. But it can, you can choke up for that for more controlled, lighter cutting at the base of the blade. Uh, you have plenty of flat and belly for any type of slicing or push cuts you would want to do. Um, it works nice in the underhand grip. Uh, again, don't really know what you would use that for in a practical standpoint, since that's really best in a fighting grip. Um, it also, I mean, and the Pakal grip, I guess that's okay. I mean, I don't know, it's not something I typically do a whole lot of. But, uh, yeah, very nice job on the D2. I've always enjoyed Benchmade's D2. I've had numerous knives from theirs in that steel and their heat treatment, and I actually quite like it. I like that they actually heat treat it a little higher than most people. Uh, the only production company I've seen, I'm not saying there aren't any, but the only ones I've seen that heat treated harder than Benchmade is Lion Steel, and they heat treated to try to hit like a 63. And while it gives you very nice edge properties, it refines it very nicely, uh, D2 at that level gets quite chippy. At this 61-ish range, it is quite nice and a very nice balanced performer at this heat treatment range in my experience. Uh, I guess if it's got quite a thick tip, so you can do some prying with it. Um, again, it is a folder, so you would have to be realistic. I, I see all this stuff in the industry about these hard-use folders. You give me any folder on the market with any lock, I'll snap it in five minutes with a vice. Um, but I don't care what lock's on it. So, I mean, it, it's as tough as a folder can be, which is nothing but a pre-broken fixed blade, in my opinion. Uh, the pocket clip is Benchmade's typical deep carry pocket clip. Um, from a retention standpoint, it's quite nice. Um, uh, carries deeply. I mean, if you're one of these people that, for whatever reason, are obsessed with having the knife disappear in your pocket, you're out of luck. That's not going to happen with this. But it retains pretty nicely in the pocket for me. I don't care about people seeing my knives. Um, I live in southern Louisiana, so it doesn't really matter to me. And I can carry basically whatever I want as long as it's not an auto. Um, yeah, all in all, I guess with the Adamas, like I said earlier, it's really a love-hate thing with the knife. And just to sum it up, to reiterate, they really took what could have been a fantastic, incredible knife and made a good knife. It's not a bad knife. I wouldn't say it's a bad knife. It's a good knife. But it could have been so much better with a couple of, maybe not minor adjustments, but with a couple of adjustments that I know I would gladly for, gladly pay for. Um, if they would ever consider doing a second version of this, I would just love if they did a full flat grind and better contouring of these handle scales and actually do brown G10. And if they did those things and put maybe 20 to 15 thou behind the edge on here, um, 
this would probably be my favorite folder on the market because I really like the general lines and aesthetics of it. It's just a couple of design features that I don't think needed to be made for the type of things they think they're